Hello, welcome to Magic's first Maya Tips and Tricks workshop. I'm Alexis Centeno, a daytime lab assistant tutor at Magic, and I will be walking you through the basics of Maya for this quarter. Here's Maya. This is just in case you've never opened up Maya before, we're going to treat these tutorials like this, at least in the beginning, but I promise as we move forward, things will get more interesting. So for this first one, I'm just going to briefly start with going into the settings preferences by going to Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager. Sometimes when you work in the lab or in computers that are not your own, you're going to come into Maya and some things don't seem to be working. It's not that anyone turned it off per se, it's just sometimes these things get shut off, I don't know why. So sometimes some things you're looking for like Arnold or OBJ export or FBX export may not be available to you it's probably because they got shut off here so sometimes I just like to do a quick check to make sure that everything that I need is here same thing that if you install a plugin it'll most likely be here and sometimes you do need to activate it manually at least the first time I see that FBX Maya is running Maya to Arnold is running let's check that OBX export that is also running so we're good I'm just gonna hit refresh real quick and close some other settings that I like to tweak to make Maya a little bit better is right here down on your bottom right there's a little running man with a cogwheel. These are Maya's preferences. Um, right here the very first one that it opens up with the time slider you usually want to change to 24 frames per second unless you're doing um, simulations like end cloth you probably want to leave it every frame but usually when you start animating and you notice that everything is way too fast it's because this is set to every frame. So if you want it to move a little bit better, you can change it to 24 frames per second. Maya does have, in Maya 2018, a lot more options for you, which is great, especially when you do motion capture, which, you know, so this could be 60 to 120 frames per second. So here's where you could change it to get a better view on your motion capture. I like to change undo to infinite. Um, this is something you want to be careful if you're using a computer that is your own at home maybe it's not as powerful as the ones here at magic so just keep that in mind that this will be taxing on your system so if things start slowing down a lot it's probably because your computer can't handle the infinite but you know when you're starting out modeling and you really get into it being able to go back pretty far really helps so if you can have this on I would recommend it another one that I like to have is for selection I like to go to center instead of whole face I'll give you a brief description why. Take that back to whole face. If you go right click and you hold to face mode, you see that it selects the whole face, which seems like something I would want, but sometimes it's very easy to grab the wrong one and you don't know it. Like I could easily grab this one and I can't see just because I was grabbing it at an angle. So to make it a little bit harder to make mistakes, I like to put center, which as you see, it puts a little blue square right in there in the center of each face. so unless I click on that center I'm not gonna actually select this face which is great especially when you extrude I'm just gonna go right up here if I hit extrude you see how there's little squares there that shows me that it worked so when I do this a new face is pop up sometimes when you're first learning you'll double extrude and you won't know you did anything wrong so you'll keep modeling but when you hit 3 or you do some other stuff you might get some funky details now in this mode they're very easy to get rid of. I can just click on them and delete the extra faces. But without um, this on, look how you can't see the difference. See, everything looks perfect but it's not. So center really helps for you to see if you've made any mistakes. So you can easily fix it and move on with your life. So I'm going to hit save. There's plenty of other settings. As you get more comfortable in Maya, you're going to want to customize this to your own preferences. But for now, this should be enough to start. All right. So let's talk about. Ooh, that's history. Let me get rid of that. Shift Alt D, by the way, gets rid of history. I'm going to just briefly discuss about how you navigate in Maya. That's usually the first question people have. And one of their greatest frustrations in the beginning is they just have a problem moving around. So we're going to just go through some basic navigation tools to zoom in and out you hold down the right mouse button on your mouse and the alt keyboard on the keyboard right here like this let's just zoom in if I want to pan I hold down the middle mouse button and hold down alt you get the little crosshairs right there 
And if I want to orbit, go around the object, that's Alt and left mouse button. Now it's important to understand that the camera is moving around this object and the object is not moving itself. As you can see in its translates, everything is set to zero and one, it's default. But say I really did want to move this object. Say I, I did, you know, I wanted to rotate it for whatever reason. There's many ways you could do that. I could actually come in here and you, if you just highlight it and then middle mouse drag, it'll do what you want. If I select all of these, I can move it in all directions. But there's also some navigational tools that make that pretty easy. So I'm going to introduce something to you called QWERTY, which is the Q-W-E-R-T-Y on your keyboard. They each have a function in Maya. If I hit Q, I get the selection, which is pretty self-explanatory. makes more sense if I have more than one object here. I can easily go from boom, boom. This is, if I hit the W, I get translate, which is, if I click on it, you get the XYZ translates, and I just briefly want to discuss what that is. Right here, you can see it. This is really helpful because it tells you where you are in space, because sometimes people will come to me and they'll be like, my mind is not working properly and I don't know why. And if you look at it here, it looks like it's normal, but I could tell right here that I'm upside down. So as soon as I flip it back over, we're good to go. Let me just delete this guy. I don't need him. So, this is how I would move it. I per it's best if you move it in one direction at a time, and you can see that it's changing right there. So the green arrow is Y, which is up. X is to go left and right. You see it's changing right there, the translates. And Z, which is the blue arrow, is front and back in space. And you see it moving there too. So that's what W does, that's for translate. If I want to rotate, the same applies. You have the green, the red, and the blue. Yellow means universal, see? I can move this object whichever way I want. Now normally with rotations, unless it's for set purposes, you want to use precise numbers. So what I usually do is I try to do it by 45 degree increments. So I get something a little bit precise, and then I'll change it if I need it. But you know, you can rotate and do whatever you want with this. R on the keyboard is for scale. Scale, on the other hand, is one that you typically want to use the middle mouse, I mean, sorry, the left mouse button in the middle yellow cube to scale universally, unless the thing that you're modeling requires you to do otherwise. See, you can scale any way you want. And then we have T. Now T doesn't look like anything happened because I deleted history. But if I were to create a new cube, and I were to hit T, it's inputs right here. This same thing shows up in real time here. And if I just middle mouse and drag, look how I get all these different options. And the subdivision width, height, and depth come in handy. Now I don't recommend using this too much unless you've already modeled something over and over again and you know exactly which how many uh, edges and faces that you need because sometimes it's better to just model and add them as you go but sometimes it does help to add one at least in the width so that you can cut one half. All right, let me just bring that cube back again. And then of course we have Y. And Y is the previous function. Whatever I did it's just going to repeat it again which is kind of handy especially when you're extruding and extruding and extruding, you're doing the same thing over and over again. It's nice to be able to just press one key that will just keep repeating itself. So that's some basic navigation in Maya. In the next workshop, I'm going to show you how to set up some image planes and how to determine what is the best shape for when you model. So I will see you next workshop. Goodbye.